Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 283 and I am back in the house. <laughs> not my house, don't know. No, we're still not building my house, but I'm home. <laughs> Don't get confused. We haven't done anything with my burned out house yet. It's still there. It's still burned. <laughs> but I'm not traveling. I'm done with my travels for a while. Holy smokes, artichokes. There was Creativation, which is in Arizona, and I was there for four days. Came home, did a YouTube, left for Germany, was there for four days. Came home, did a YouTube, left for New York, and I was in and out of there in a matter of like 48 hours. And now I am home and I have my pillow. Oh, I don't know what it is about pillows, but when it's your own pillow, it makes all the difference. It just does. And don't get me wrong. I love my husband and I love my children, but I was so happy to see my own pillow, my own bed, my own shower. Oh yes, absolutely. Now the house, well, I'm back in the house, meaning I'm back here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, but not back home yet. That's a whole nother story. We can talk about that another time. Today, today I have got a YouTube that is going back to the basics. We're going to start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to sing that because it's copyright. Uh, I'd be infringing on copyright, I think, on YouTube, but that's from The Sound of Music in case you didn't know. Now, I've got, I've got product from Spellbinders and it is a flash sale. Flash sale. There's my flashing. Flash. <laughs> what is a flash sale? Well, I think it's different for every company. We are a little more particular about what we do as a flash sale. Well, well, I have companies contact me all the time saying, Stacy, we've got this product. We'd love for to give it to you for a flash sale. And sometimes they will send me the product. It's like, no, don't send me live samples. Send me pictures and pricing. And if it looks like something we may be interested in, I'll let you know. But I get it all the time to where I probably could have a flash sale every single month. We don't necessarily subscribe to that, that thought process. For me, Stacy. To bring you, my family, a flash sale, it has to meet certain criteria. It has to be from a company that we know, we love, we trust. Absolutely. It has to be product that has multiple uses where you can get more bang for your flash sale buck. It has to be at a price that is holy smokes artichokes. And, and I have to like it. <laughs> Ultimately, that's one of the other things. I have to like it. So I have a flash sale for you today from Spellbinders. And I will tell you right away, it's limited in, pro in quantity. We do not have lots and lots and lots of it. We don't offer a flash sale every month. There's nothing wrong with people doing that, but I think at that point, a flash sale every month really isn't a flash sale anymore. It's just a sale. So we try to hold these opportunities to about maybe five a year to where it really means something. If you're seeing flash sale every other week from the same company, what does that mean? It loses what it was supposed to be. So we try to honor what a flash sale, what a true flash sale is supposed to be by not doing them all the time. And when we do them, bring you product that is just smoking hot amazing. So Spellbinders, that's what I have for you today. And I am limited in how much I have. We have definitely more than 20, but we do not have thousands and thousands of this product. I have two different bundles for you. There's two, and you can buy both of them. You can just buy one of them. You can, it, it's up to you, but they are limited. I also have a certain range of dies and stamps that you can buy open stock and that's the only way they're going to be sold is open stock. So there's two bundles and gosh, maybe nine dies that are open stock where you can just buy onesies of them. If you think that this is something you're going to want to take advantage of, just pause me. There's my pause face. Pause me and go look because there's nothing worse than you watching the whole YouTube. You're so excited and then you go and it's sold out and that breaks my heart. If it is sold out by the time you get there, put yourself on the notify me list. You would be shocked at how many people choose pay later and then never pay for their orders. 
it's a really high number, so high that I am going to have to start thinking about whether we can continue to offer a pay later option. Because what happens is they place their orders, they choose pay later, that inventory is allocated to them, and then they don't pay for their order, and then we're left with that product. So if we're sold out of one of the bundles that you want, put your click notify me. Do that because I guarantee you there will be people who will buy and they will not pay for their order. And then when it becomes available again and we will honor that price, you will get an email. You and everybody else who's on the notify me list. So that list, once I put it back in stock, if 500 people are on that list, 500 emails go out and then it becomes who gets there first. Let's say you get notified and it's already sold out again put yourself back on the notify me list because then if more come back in stock, we have more cancellations, you'll get notified again. And what ultimately happens is let's say on the first list, there's 500 people who want to be notified and that email goes out and maybe there's only 30 of them to sell. Well, out of that 500 people, maybe a hundred of you will put your name back on that list. And then let's say the next round of cancellations comes and I get 30 more. Well, you've got much better odds now, don't you? Because there's only a hundred of you. But let's say you still didn't get it. Put your name back on the notify me list because now out of the hundred of you, maybe five of you will put your name back on that notify me list. You may have to put your name on the notify me list three or four or five times until you are the last person on the list. And when it goes in stock, you are the only one who gets the email. Hello? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be persistent, but <laughs> eventually, hopefully you will end up with whatever it is you wanted. And at these prices, I think you're going to be thrilled. Um, what else? I have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. So hopefully you have paused me. That's my pause face. You've gone, you've looked, you've decided yay or nay. You've come back and you're going to finish watching this YouTube, which really does take you back to the basics. In the beginning, Spellbinders was one of the first die cutting companies along with Sizzix. It was Sizzix, Spellbinders, and they were really the only ones out there. And Spellbinders had a very unique property to their some of their dyes, which still holds true today. They have a, a, a unique added value benefit to some of their dyes, which you can't find in a lot of other dyes, which is important. And I'm going to show you that today, but that means I'm taking you all the way back to the beginning. So if you are a new die cutter or you think you might want to die cut and become that type of a crafter, this YouTube is Wahoo Kachu for you. If you've been die cutting for a while, but you're always interested in learning more, well then this YouTube is for you. And if you have been die cutting since the time of dirt, like me, well then you're as old as I am and this is a very good refresher for you because who doesn't need to be reminded of what some dyes can do, right? The older we get, we need a little more prompting. I know I do. Oh my goodness gracious, you've got to remind me like three or four. In fact, the rule is no post-it notes on Stacy's desk. If they're, if the girls need to tell me something, they are not allowed to leave a note on my desk because I will take that note, I'll shove it in a pocket, I'll put it over there and I lose it and I don't know where I put it. I was not like that in my 30s. Now that I'm 50, I embrace... <laughs> I embrace that that is the way it is, but I'm also a much mellower person than I was. Can you believe this is mellow, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's talk about winter, winter chicken dinner. And then I'm going to show you the free in-store make and take going on right now. Well, not right now, soon, because we're live chatting. Hello, everybody who's on live chat. Hey! <laughs> and then I have to go do the in-store make and take with people. All right. So are we ready to see who's a winner, winner, chicken dinner? This is from YouTube number 282. We are counting down to 300. It was Hampton Arts. Bless their pea picking hearts. Lynn from Hampton Arts, she just rocked getting everything to us. She, and the prices were stellar. So give it up to Hampton Arts. We love, love, love them. So our first winner is Chris Haskins. Hello, Chris Haskins. Let's see if I can make that zoom in. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know why, but if I put my hand there, it helps it zoom it. Hello, Chris. If that's you, 
You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. It was so funny when I was in Germany, I was walking down the aisle and I heard somebody in, I don't know if it was Russian. I heard them say, winner, winner, chicken dinner lady. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I, I don't have an accent to use, but winner, winner, chicken dinner lady walking down an aisle at the show in Germany. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had one lady come. You're the crazy American lady. I am. I'm Stacy, the crazy American lady and proud of it. <laughs> Everybody was so kind over in Germany. They were just all the nationalities and all the people and all the different creative things that I saw and all the different manufacturers it was just it was just eye candy for me it truly was even though i don't do like the the fine 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 art paints and things like that i i i mean but looking at that product and seeing the beauty in all of it it was just amazing and the people are so lovely it was cold but they're lovely i mean it was cold outside okay so chris haskins in case you forgot <laughs> you're a winner winner kid chicken dinner there you go chris okay who's your next who's your who's your counterpart We've got Sean, Sean Frank. Sean, is that you? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. All right, you two, how are you gonna claim your prize? Super easy, go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com, look for the link that says winner, winner, chicken dinner, click it, follow the directions, and we will get your prizes out to you just as quickly as possible. Uh, shop that did not hop update, we are processing day one, day two, and day one and day two. All of day one and day two are up and being processed, and I think we might have even started day three. So I know orders are going out, and I know you guys are getting them. God bless your pea picking hearts for being so kind with your, I got my order. That makes my heart so happy. And for those of you who placed your order but didn't realize it was going to be a wait, I tried to warn you, but we're shipping them now, so just hang tight. <laughs> Okay, what have we got for you? Oh, I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started for today because I've got a super cute make and take that they're doing in store. And if you're ever local in Southern California, by Los Angeles, here in Canyon Country, California, or also known as Santa Clarita, come do the make and take with me on a Saturday. Come. I'm out there all day with you. Well, until about, until I get tired, usually around 1, 1 1.30, maybe 2. Sometimes it's as late as 3. It just depends. But come spend the day with us. We're fun. The store is a blast. And everybody is so kind. And, and all of our customers are so welcoming. They get so excited when somebody's walked in from another state or another country. They just are, they get so excited and they just, it's wonderful. So if you're ever in our neighborhood, come visit us. All right, I'm going to tilt on down and we're going to get started for today. Bye. Big old thank you to Arizona Andrew who helped make this YouTube possible because uh, I'm gonna tilt on him because it is his product that we are using and he got the price to where I wanted it to be. Now did I have to I uh, did I have to like hold his arm behind his back? Not really. <laughs> How cute is this? Oh maybe that's too close. We have our, what is that, oh, come back, come back. I don't know what I did. Stacy, I don't know, am I still going? Oh yeah, there I am, okay. I'm gonna try and zoom back just a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. Now I'm not gonna touch the camera again because I always mess it up. All right, here's the in-store free make and take. Is it not darling? So cute. SMS girl Doris and Claire put this together. Love, love, love it. Look at how super cute it is. And we are using a Spellbinder die. Part of the Indie set, the Indie collection, which means it was part of the collection done just for the independents, which means you can't find these dies at Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby or even Spellbinders Dot com doesn't sell them. They'll show you a picture of it, but they're not selling them on their own site because this was done just for us independent stores. And this is what we have on flash sale. I've got a whole bunch of them to show you. But let's start at the very beginning. And I'm going to play with one of the indie dies 
This is the pineapple and the little flower. Tropical pineapple is what they're calling it. I don't know, is that a plumeria flower? I always get confused about the flowers, what their name is. This dye retails for $9.99, but not today. No, it'll be part of one of the bundles and it will be, I believe, 70% off. I know, crazy. But I wanna start with where Spellbinders started at and that's a little bit about their dyes. So Spellbinders dies are a wafer die. You can see it's wafer thin. I don't know if I can, you can see it's wafer thin, like a flat, like a pancake. And Spellbinders was really one of the first to do chemically etched dies. They were not well known in the industry like they are today. Um, they were they were pretty much on the market all by themselves for a really long time. I remember Quick Cuts was out there too, but gosh, do you all remember Quick Cuts? And then they became lifestyle crafts and I, I, so many names have changed or companies have gone out of business. But what Spellbinders did is their cut line is different than everybody else's. Their cut line is centered in between the outside edge and the inside edge. So their cut line is right there in between. And so that little ridge is what's going to cut the paper. Now, they did that for a very specific reason, and we're gonna get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna do the butterfly with that. But Spellbinders also was one of the very first to add lots of uh, opportunity to emboss and to ink. And by doing that, they've put these little, these little um, in the pineapple, the little decor area in there, but there's no cut lines anywhere on any of these little tri or, uh, diamond patterns. There's no cut line. So if I sent this through, all it's gonna do is cut out the pineapple shape. It's not gonna cut out any of these little areas. And that was really revolutionary way back in the day when Spellbinders first started. A dye that not only cut, but that you could emboss and you could stencil. Now it's much more prevalent in the industry, but you gotta give them props. They're really the first ones to come out with this. They're the first ones who, who brought it to market years ago, back when I was, um, yeah, younger. <laughs> but they did a beautiful job with it, and it, it, it made their dyes different than everybody else's. And their dyes are still different than everybody else's. So I'm gonna play with this because I want you to see what you can do with this cute little pineapple. And I'm gonna try and do a couple different things with it so you get an idea of how it's used. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it out of white paper so you can see. Now I'm gonna be using my Spellbinder Platinum machine today. You can certainly use a cuddle bug machine. You can use a big shot machine. You can use a big kick machine. You can use a Spellbinder Grand Caliber machine. You can use a Crafter's Companion machine. Just about any machine is going to work. But I'm using the Spellbinders machine and I've got their platform. Now, if you have their Spellbinders machine and you also have a platform from Ellison from Sizzix, will it work? Yes. The reason why we're carrying the Spellbinders machine is because it folds up. I don't want to joggle too much. It folds up. It's a very small footprint is what they call it in the industry, a footprint. So it takes up less space than perhaps a big shot machine, which stays permanently down. Now Ellison is selling a machine. Sizzix is selling a machine that folds up and down. Unfortunately, I don't think they're allowing us retailers to buy it. I think they're selling it through their own site and through Walmart. So um, that's kind of an ouch in my heart a little bit. But, but if you would like to take a look, I don't want you to think that this is the only machine that folds up. The Sizzix machine will also fold up. What I do know about it is that the, the platforms on the Sizzix machine do not go straight down to your table. So this builds a nice sturdy base for you. The Sizzix machine, um, the wings kind of are mid-air, sort of like a cuddle bug machine. And I haven't had the chance to play with it yet, so I don't know how much pressure you can put on those wings before they might snap. And they might not snap at all. 
I don't know, haven't had a chance to play with it. I do know that this machine builds its base straight onto your table, so you can put as much pressure on it as you want. And this machine was out before the Ellison, the Sizzix machine was, and so many of you wanted a machine that folds up and down for space. So that is why we brought it in, and it does what it says it's going to do. So I'm working with their machine, the Spellbinders. Um, this is a Platinum 6. I've got their uh, or their platform in here. If you do have a Sizzix machine and you wanted to use a multi-purpose platform in here, you absolutely could. You also could use a Sizzix magnetic platform in here without any problem. Lots of things between the two machines are totally interchangeable. I'm going to put down my cup plate. I'm going to put down my paper. I'm going to put down my die with those that edge around that outside down against my paper because that's what's going to cut it and I'm going to send it on through. And this is an open frame die, which means it is not intricate, which means one pass should do just fine. So I've sent it through. I could take it out right now, but if you want to, you can send it on back. Up to you. This is an easy die to cut. It's just a basic shape. And there it is. It's got a little of a bit of an embossing to it, but there it is. Not too much to Wahoo write home about, but what more can you do with this die? A lot more. Let's start with, I'm gonna take some of my paper. This is part of my chocolate paper. So this is my chocolate paper. We manufacture it now because coordination's stopped. It is all browns on the front, different shades of browns, but colors on the back which means when you sand this paper, it sands to the color that's on the back side. So I have grabbed a piece of chocolate paper. I've got a green on the back side. I'm gonna grab my scissors. Should we do that first? Yeah, let's do this first. We're gonna do this first. Grab my scissors and I think I might even put a little piece of Stacy tape on the back to make it an instant sticker. So Stacy tape on the back. This is a double-sided adhesive. It comes, everything as thin as an eighth of an inch all the way up to six inches. This is a quarter inch. This I think is two inches. We have it in lots of different widths. It is heat resistant. It's acid resistant or acid free. It's, it's perfect. It's a great product. All right. So this time I'm gonna put my die right down on there and I'm gonna send it back on through again. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I did before. I've got my do not cut plate right here. I'm cutting into my cut plate. You wanna try and keep one plate, see look at how, oh look at how bad that is. It's fabulous, isn't it? That means it's getting used. Whereas this one, looky how shiny and pretty and happy it is. You wanna try to keep one plate as a do not cut because it allows your platform to go through your machine much easier. Everything is eventually going to warp. As you use your plates, as you're cutting into them, they're going to warp, it happens. So having one plate that is not warped allows it to go through your, um, through your machine, whether it be a big shot or a big kick or a vagabond or a spellbinders platinum, it just helps go through a little bit easier. So I've got my die, I've got my top plate, platform, cut plate, paper, die, top plate and I'm gonna send it on through. Ta-da! Now, it's got a little bit of an embossing because I put Stacy tape on the back of it, but what if I really wanted it to emboss well, that's easy to do. I'm just gonna put my die right back in my, my die cut right back in my die, right back in my die. Now, being that this is a Spellbinders machine, when you emboss with dies, it's a little different than when you use a Big Shot machine. Their platform is a little different and this is where it does make a difference what you have. 
The Spellbinders machine comes with their platform. It also comes with what is known in, by me as a squishy and a knock-knock. But this is the Spellbinders version of a squishy and a knock-knock. And if you buy their machine, it comes with the machine. If you're buying a Big Shot or a Big Kick or any Sizzix product, these are sold separately and does not come with the machine. Now, building the platform's a little different. Most of the time, you want to just go ahead and put a clear plate down. It's just natural. You just want to start there because we're always building some form of a sandwich. This time, because we're using a Spellbinders machine, you don't use that clear plate at all. Your die, with the cut in it, goes directly down onto your base plate. Now, it needs to be facing up. If I face it down and I send it through, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cut into this. It's gonna leave a little bit of a cut all the way around and you're gonna have to pry your die out. Is it gonna harm that if you do it? No, it's not gonna ruin anything. You'll do it once, maybe twice, and then you'll never ever do it again. You'll just know not to. So I need my die facing up. I need that paper facing down. If you can see the paper and you want to do an embossing, turn it around. It's backwards. You not you can't see the paper. You want to make sure that it's down. Okay, then I'm going to use my squishy. What they use, it's a tan mat for them and a knock knock. So you see where I get the name and it's a purpley mat for spellbinders. I'm then going to send it back through my machine. And again, it is kind of nice that you get the you get the mat and the platform and the texture. Now you can see the squishies coming out the back end. You know you're doing it right if that tan mat or your silicone, your uh, your gray mat from Ellison from Sizzix is coming out the back end because what's happening is that there's a roller in here and you've got that die face down with the paper and you've got this squishy mat and this hard mat and as it goes through the roller the squishy mat is compressing down against that paper pushing that paper into those open areas of the pineapple where there's no cut line it's pushing it down it's forcing it to make an embossing almost like you had a light box and a stencil and you took your little stylus and you were going in there and you were forcing that paper into with the with the brass stencil on top and you were making that embossing happen that is what's happening here as i roll it through this is a one roll do not roll it back one roll through only And then what happens? I'm gonna pop it out. And now look at that embossing. Can you see how deep that is? It is amazing. And Spellbinders was one of the very, very first to give you that opportunity to emboss a die. Not only did you cut it, but you added the detail in by embossing it. So remember I said I used my chocolate paper. And what's so special about that chocolate paper? Well, when I sand this, the color green that was underneath it is going to come up. My sanding gadget is going to hit all the high places of where I've embossed. And that green paper is going to come off. Giving me the beginnings. Let's see if I can steal my little. Giving me the beginnings. There's my pineapple. Super cute. No ink at all. All I did was die cut. I didn't use anything more than a sand it gadget than what they already gave me in the box. They gave me the, the base plate. They gave me the squishy. They gave me, let's see, squishy. They gave me the knock knock. And they gave me clear plates to die cut with. So to do this, all I needed was a sand it gadget, sanding block, and some paper. 
And that is one of the things that made Spellbinders. It really put them on, on the, the scope of a major manufacturer because they were so innovative in how they manufactured their dyes. But we're not done. That's not all that their dyes do. I'm gonna put this off to the side. And I'm still gonna work with my pineapple and I am using my gotcha tool. So if you didn't watch last week's YouTube, here's my new gotcha tool. It holds your dies. It's got an easel, lays flat. We can ship it a lot easier. So it's got a full four inch all the way around for your dies so you can put them anywhere. Much bigger than what the Spellbinders main attraction was, which has a much smaller place a magnet for your dies. I will let you know that Spellbinders did manufacture this for me. I think it's the right thing to do. I went to them, I told them this is what I want. If they had said no, I would have found somebody to manufacture it, but I believe that you stay with the people that brought you to the dance. And Spellbinders has always been a supporter of Scrapbooking Made Simple, and when I went to them, I said this is what I really want. I need it because I wanna be able to ship it, and your main attraction has that pointy end. And so they said, we will make it for you. It will be yours. Nobody can buy it anywhere else. It's got my Simply Refined brand on it, and I own the mold. So, um, so I didn't want anybody to think that I that I copied Spellbinders. I, I did. I, I think I improved upon it. But then I had them manufacture it for me, so that they they still are making money. <laughs> it would be terrible to knock something off and go get it from someplace else and then cut out the person, the company that brought it to market and their main attraction was the first to market and now mine's the second. So, and it's $13.99. Okay, so I'm gonna take, and this time, instead of doing my brown paper and sanding it, because that's one way of using the Spellbinders dies, super cute. What if you don't have that paper, right? Okay, let me show you what else their dies can do. I think I'm gonna start with just some white paper. Well, no, maybe I will, maybe we'll wait for the white paper. I'm gonna grab a piece of colored paper. And let's see. Oh, this one's good. Used it before, use it again. So I've got the back half of um, some of my die cuts with a view brights pattern paper because it is two-sided and maybe I'll do two of them because I want you to see that too all right so I'm gonna grab my die I'm gonna bring over my machine I've got my cut plate down with my platform my cut plate I've got my die cutting into my paper. And then I'm gonna send it on through. And I'm gonna put it over here for right now. And then I'm gonna take this paper and cut into the plain green. So I'm gonna have one of each. I'll have my little chevron piece and I'll have my little plain green piece. So you can see the difference. Send it on through. Ooh, shake, shake, shake. Okay. So I've cut two. So I've got one and one, or two and two, or two and two. But at this point, I've got two of my pineapples, but without the detail on them, and I need to add the detail. So I'm gonna bring back over my squishy and knock knock. I'm gonna leave my platform. I'm gonna get rid of my cut plates and my do not cut plate. I'm going to put my die back in. Let's see which way it goes. Oh, there it clicked in. I'm gonna put my die back in. Put it 
put it right down on my platform, no clear plate at all. Put my squishy in, put my knock knock in, and send it on through. And it's just a one roll. I don't want to roll backwards and forwards. I just want to roll it once. And I can tell that my squishy is coming out the back end, which is what I want. Awesome. So you can't tell, but I've got an embossing there. Then I'm going to do this one. And this time I want it to have the green. So I want absolute opposites. So you can see the difference. And put my squishy in. So the squishy and the knock knock with spellbinders are the few things that you cannot interchange with a Sizzix machine. Their squishy and knock knock will not work in your spellbinders machine. It just, it's not thick enough. So there we go. It almost feels like you're not doing anything because you're not cutting, but it is definitely doing the embossing. Now, what happens if you accidentally cut into your mat? Who cares if you accidentally cut into it? It's fine, don't worry about it. Okay. So now I've got the embossing here, and I've got it here. On this one, because I am working with double-sided paper, any double-sided paper is ultimately white core paper. They've printed on this side, they've printed on this side, but they started with a sheet of just white paper. So, like my brown, where if you sand it, it sands to a color, that's because they started with a colored piece of paper. This, uh, They started with this color paper and then they printed the brown on top so you can sand to it. Any double-sided paper is going to be white in the center. So I can then take my sand it gadget and I'm sanding the side with chevrons. And what's going to happen is where those high points are from that embossing, my sand it gadget is going to take that paper off and make it white. I'm going to sand off the top part of my paper. And thereby revealing the detail. So there's my pineapple. And all I did was take a piece of double-sided paper, any double-sided paper. Now it can't be the it can't be cardstock. It can't be um, a paper where if you tear it, it's the same color all the way through. That's not going to work for you like this, this black paper. This is the same color all the way through. You could sand and sand and sand and sand, and it's never going to change. Eventually, you'll just sand right through it and have a hole in your paper. You need a piece of paper that has two different sides to it because that means it's been printed and it should have something else in the middle, most often white. And it allows you to have an opportunity to make more than just that. That's what we started with. But we were able to finish like this, and that looks great, right? So it's pretty much doing the same thing as we did with the brown paper, only what if you don't have the chocolate paper to do that with? Okay, look at how cute it is here. Darling, right? And that will work on any die that has an embossing feature. And you know it has an embossing feature if there are no cut lines, no cut lines around those openings. No cut lines, it's just flat. If it has a little ridge like this one, then you know it's gonna cut. But if it's just flat, it's meant to do this. But there's more. 
So I wanted you to see the difference. And I could sand this one too. Now I could put this, let's take this one and put this one in there. Oh yeah, let's try that. So I'm gonna put this back in here and we're gonna detail it up even more. So I've laid it right back in there. What if I wanted to detail it up even more than what I've got? Maybe I don't wanna sand it. Maybe sanding isn't the way I wanna go. Okay, let's play with some colors, some inks, because this is a stencil too. There's your stencil right there waiting for you. So if you wanted to add more dimension to it or change that green paper into something a little bit more, you can. I'm going to grab I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow and my daubers. So I've got my finger daubers. Yes, we sell finger daubers. You, you get the whole thing. So ours is a 40 pack in the case for $23.99 and I think that's our that's our everyday price or you can just buy the finger daubers we sell 20 for $9.99 which is I know the lowest price anywhere okay so I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow because I think everything looks better with yellow you can barely even see the yellow on there then I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of green on top of my yellow. And I'm just using my Memento inks and my daubers. Add a little bit, I'll put it back in. Add a little bit of green. There we go. Add a little bit of green. And then I might go back and just add a little bit more yellow to smooth that green out just a little bit. And then maybe I jump in with a little bit of brown. So I have a dauber for every color family, not necessarily for every color I own. And I'm using my Memento ink, which is a dye-based ink, and I'm using it in a um, in the dewdrop size, not even the full size, because I don't see, I don't know that you necessarily need a lilac posies in a full size pad. <laughs> for over six dollars but you might love lilac posies for two dollars and 29 cents and because it's only two dollars and 29 cents and not six dollars you can get the grape and you can get the teal zeal so i like the dew drops because of their size i like them because they're memento inks and they will match if you do have a full size pad all the inks will match together i like that you can re-ink them they do sell the re-inkers we sell the re-inkers so if you want to re-ink them you don't throw them away when they're no longer juicy you just get the re-inker and you can re-ink these for basically life a little bit and then maybe just a little bit more green so i'm just trying to add a little definition to my to my pineapple okay so that's where i'm at i added some can you see it i added some green i added some yellow i added some brown and then when i actually take the stencil off poof right wahoo ka -choo. And now, oh, is that going to stick? Maybe if I put some more Stacy tape on it. Maybe if I put some more Stacy tape and make a goober. What's a goober? A goober is where you take your Stacy tape and you peel off the liner and the tape stays on you and then you roll it up like you were a kid with a goober. See, I had a goober on it, but I've pulled it on and off so many times. Now I'm going to put my new goober on it. Okay, a totally different look. But it looks pretty good, right? And all I did was use some inks that you probably already have. If you don't have a memento, 
okay, no big deal. Do you have Stampin' Up? Do you have Lawn Fawn? Do you have Tim Holtz? Do you, whose ink do you have? And do you have a combination of them? Fine, use them. Use them that you don't have to be matchy-matchy. Maybe you've got a few Tim inks, you've got a few Memento inks, you've got a few Stampin' Up inks. All you want is a beautiful palette to play with because then you get to make things that are different. So here we sanded it on my chocolate paper. Here we sanded it on just double-sided paper, but here we inked it. And I bet you have plenty of paper and ink to play with. I'm sure, because so far all we really used is paper. But what if you don't? What if all you have is white paper and some ink? Okay, no problem. Let's do that white paper and ink. Here's my white paper. I'm going to wipe off my dye just on the top since I um, since I was stenciling over the top of it. Here's my dye. I'm going to cut it first. So let's get that done. Oh, hmm. Am I going to cut it first? No, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play with color first. <laughs> I'm going to take, let's say, like my pistachio. And I'm just going to put some of this color down. No rhyme, no reason. I just need it to be big enough that I have enough color for my entire dye. Just making a big old circle. And because this is me, and I am who I am, and everything looks better with a little yellow in it, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. And kind of throw some on there. Okay, now I'm going to die cut. Look at I have a blob. Not very pretty, I get it, but it's going to be Take my die, put it on. Let's bring over my Platinum 6 machine. Let's grab, oh, I could make it a sticker. Let's grab my platform. We'll grab my cut plate, put it down on there. Put my die on there. Grab my do not cut plate. Slide that on in and send it on through. Roll it through once, it should be just fine. Easy peasy mac and cheesy, I've made a lovely oval. <laughs> Fabulous oval, Stacy. why thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Let's put my platform back. I'm gonna put my die back in. And you can almost hear it click back into place. You know it's back into place when you move it around and it doesn't move anymore. I'm gonna put it face up. I do not want to see the paper that makes my heart happy. If this is what I wanna see on my finished project, it needs to go face down against my platform. If I wanna see this on my finished project and I have it this way, I am doing it wrong. I need it to be upside down. And let's take our squishy and let's take our knock knock and let's send it on through. And the knot, the squishy is going to start coming out the back end. That's how you know you're doing it right because it's compressing down and as it's compressing down, it's pushing that squishy out because it's squishing out. So you want the squishy to come out the back end. That's how you know you're doing it right. If squishy is coming out the back end, wahoo, ka -choo. Okay. Squishy has come out the back end and it is embossed. Now, I could sand this because I've got white paper underneath. And what would happen is I would end up with something very much like this. Or I can put it back into my die 
and I can turn it over and I can finish coloring it. So you don't even have to have colored paper to make these work. I'm using white paper and doing the exact same thing. So if you really want to match something, if you really want your colors to blend, if, if you're wanting to um, stamp with this ink and have everything kind of match so that it all is, it just goes so beautiful. All you got to do is make your own paper. You got white paper, I know you do. And there's my pineapple. And then if I wanted to, because I've got that edge around, and where's my, because I've got that edge around, I could take my darker green if I really wanted to, and I could just edge a little bit around that. my dauber just a little bit of color and then put my little top on it and it's good to go now the top comes with it so what if I took my white paper and I Got some of it down. And let's add a little bit of my pistachio, which is a lighter green. Just kind of got that in there too. And what if I wanted to add a little bit of my yellow? Just to brighten it a little bit because all you've got is all you've got is white paper. You don't have any cardstock to play with. You just, or you've got a ton of white paper and you want to use it up. All right, let's bring it on over. I'm going to put this on my gotcha so I don't lose it. I've got my cup plate, my die my do not cut plate and I'm going to send it on through. One cut is more than enough. One roll is more than enough because it is not an intricate die. Open it up. Put that to the side. I'm going to put these to the side. Now did you notice that this die also has an embossing feature? You've got these three open areas where there is no cut line at all. So let's line it back up, put it upside down, grab my, my squishy and my knock knock. And remember with the Spellbinders machine, these come with it. They're not a separate purchase. With a Big Shot machine or a, any Sizzix machine, it is a separate purchase. My squishy is going to come out my back end. It's starting to grow as it's being compressed down. Oh, that looks good. So you can see, hopefully you can see, the embossing where it embossed. And I could sand this and it would sand to white, but instead I'm going to take it and put it right back. So you can see it on the back side too where it embossed. I'm going to put it right back down. I'm going to go in there with a little bit darker green just on those open areas because the die is acting as a mask for everything else. It's only letting me emboss where those open areas are, keeping the rest of the color exactly the way it was. 
And this really is what puts Spellbinders on the map. It was pretty ingenious, honestly. Okay. Now look what I was able to do. And I used white paper. I haven't used, I didn't use my, my expensive cardstock. I didn't use my pretty um, um, textured, linen textured basil paper. I'm just using white paper. And then let's get a little goober going. You're like, what's a goober again? Let's get a little goober going. So a goober, I put the tape on, peel off the liner, roll it into itself, put it on the back. That is what makes Spellbinders dies so wow. It really does. The fact that you can do so much with them. You can die, you can just die cut them if you want. You can die cut and sand them. You can die cut and ink them. It's, you have so many options. You can take them and, and, and sand and play and, and it's not just one, one die doing one thing. It's one die giving you a whole bunch of opportunities based off of what's already in your stash. What do you already have that you can now utilize even more because the dies allow you to do that? Who doesn't want options? That's what this is all about with Spellbinders. They give you options. What makes your heart happy? I know it's a pineapple. What makes your heart pineapple -y happy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on because I'm going to play with one of their layering dies too. Now this is part of the second bundle and this is one of their layering dies and it is three dies, kind of like my kaleidoscope so that they you start with one and then add the next one and then add the next one and you would do three different colors so you have three different variations. They're beautiful. They are. And they're easy to use. So, um, but I really want to play with the base die. And let me cut, let me cut the base die for you so you see. Well, maybe I'll just cut all three of them so you see all of them. Um, what paper do I have over here? I've got that one. And I've got that one. So I'm going to cut all three of them just so you see how they're meant to go. So let's grab all of them. Ooh. Oh, maybe I want this one. No, nope, just go, right? Just do it. <laughs> think long, think wrong. I was thinking maybe I want this one in black. So if I did this and this and then this one in black, maybe I'll do that. And I'll save my white. All right, let's bring over our die cutting machine. Put down our cut plate and you can tell it's a cut plate because it looks ooh but that's great that's what you want it to look like that's a happy day that means you've been die cutting and let's do that one and that one and that one and hopefully I have I've made them big enough so this is my solid this is my solid and this is my detail and this is my frame. Okay, good, I did. And let's do a do not cut plate over the top. And let's send them on through. 
Now I am going to run this through more than once. Oh, plate's not straight. Okay, so my plates, my clear plates are slightly crooked. There, I've straightened them out. Now it will take it through. I had them slightly askew. There we go. And I am asking it to cut all three dies at the same time. So I'm going to send it on through. Chances are once is enough, but it doesn't hurt to roll it back. These are not very intricate dies. So you shouldn't need a precision base plate. Let me make sure I went all the way to the end and now roll it all the way back. You shouldn't need a precision base plate to make these work. They're not that intricate, but you may want to roll it back and forth just to be sure. And let's see, you may even want to rotate, but let's see what I got. There's one, there's two, and then this one's easy peasy. One, two, three. I'm filling up my gotcha tool. If you already have a Spellbinders tool, the, um, the main attraction, you don't necessarily need a gotcha tool. You already have one that works. This one just happens to be bigger and is easier for me to ship. So this is how, I should have made these stickers. This is how these are meant to lay. So this is how their layering dies are meant to look. You've got all three pieces. So you can use just this piece by itself. You can use just this piece and this piece by itself. You can put all three of them together. You can take away the back piece and just do the two here. You can take away the middle piece and just do here. Are you getting the fact that you've got options? Lots of them. And this is how the die is meant to be. But there is another part of Spellbinders dies that is pretty, um, pretty well known just to them. And it has to do with that cut edge, remember I told you, so their cut edge isn't on the, in, on the outside and it isn't on the inside, it's centered in between the outside and the inside um, edges of the die. Most dies these days, your cut edge is right along the inside of the die. That's where they are for the most part, but Spellbinders has always put theirs centered and there's a reason for that. Let me show you. This time I am just going to use my white paper because this looks like a very boring die in white. Put it down, send it through. It, it, it's just white paper. What can you do with white paper, Stacy? Well, if you've got a little imagination and some inks, you can do a lot. I'm not going to emboss it. There's no embossing feature in this die. It's all going to cut. There you have it. So it's just a white butterfly. But wait, it doesn't have an embossing feature in it. So now what am I going to do with it? I'm going to put it right back in, just like I've been doing, and I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to grab some of my colors. So I'm working on with lilac posies here. And I'm going to do some lilac posies on the outside edges of him or her. 
Is it a boy butterfly or a girl butterfly? Okay, that's where I am so far. I've just added a little bit of color. Now I'm going to grab another color. Um, I don't know, let's play with some orange. It'll be a very tropical, happy, bright butterfly. I need to make sure he doesn't move, which if you're at home, you're not picking him up trying to show him to the camera. So I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to go right into that. right into that um, lilac posies and kind of blend those colors right into that lilac posies and this is tangelo I can throw a little bit back Okay, so I'm going to pick it up again and show you where I'm at now. So that's where I'm at now. Now I'm going to lay him down one more time. Oh, straighten him up because I moved him. There we go. They kind of click right back into place. You know that it's in the right place when you hear it. It feels like it kind of clicks in. And this time let's grab a really bright Oh, let's grab a blue, Bahama blue, because it's a tropical butterfly, obviously. <laughs> I think it's ready for um, uh, pina colada. Those are tropical drinks, right? And I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. Okay, so that's where I'm at. And then I take it out. And that's what I have. Oh, it's like magic because Spellbinders puts that cut line in between the inside and the inside and the outside edge. It creates this little mask right here that gives you a perfect border all the way around in any color you want to use. But I'm just using white paper and I just used some random colors to color what was my blah, plain, not much of anything, butterfly. Amazing. And then, then you could take the top one. If that's all you wanted to use, you could take that top one and put it over it and just glue down the center of the butterfly so that you're able to bring these wings all the way up. Let's see if I can get a little goober going. Little goober. Okay, so I'm gonna take my goober and I'm gonna put it right on the center body. And then I'm gonna lay it down so I'm not going to glue down the whole wing because I want to lift these wings so that they're coming off my butterfly. And yet I've still got that beautiful white edge around. Again, this is what made Spellbinders help make Spellbinders who they are because you took something that was just white and with a little bit of ink, you transformed it into something that is wonderful. And because it's got that built-in edge around it, you don't have to worry about, you know, have you seen when they take the, the, um, the dyes that are um, nesting and you and they've got this beautiful color on the inside and then the white edge all the way around chances are they were using a spellbinder dye and they did just what i did 
they took white paper and they cut their oval and they I suppose I could do it with this one let's do this oh but this one's got the hmm <laughs> I need it to be open open dies are better to do this with do I have another I don't have anything else open over here so it's just gonna have to stay the butterfly but if you had a nesting die and it was a spellbinders and you cut it out and then you left it in the frame and you inked on the inside and then you picked up that frame you would be left with that perfect white rim all the way that perfect white border all the way around if they're beautiful it, it's simple and anybody can do it you can do this all you have to do is have some white paper the spellbinders dies and just a little bit of imagination just a little bit and because you're playing with colors and you're only using white paper experiment this is your opportunity to play you have lots of white paper so cut yourself on the layering cut yourself the flowers and the butterflies and then go in there I don't even have to pop it out if I don't want to go in there and um, let's use some red Let's use a little bit of orange. See, for me, it's easier to keep it in place if I keep it in the big piece of paper. Let's use some yellow. I'm just putting yellow over the whole thing just to kind of blend my colors together and then oh let's give it a little bit of a pop of brown just in the center okay that's where I'm at Then I can pop him right out. And then I can pop him right out. It's pretty much like magic. And then if you don't even want to use the black. And you just start to make them yours. But you still have two other dies that you could have played with. Oh my gosh, you could make this black and you could color this like that and put that over that and oh my gosh, that would be striking. It is amazing the opportunity that you have to play with these. And because they're on a flash sale, it's going to allow you to get them at a price that I think most of you will be able to afford. And if you look at them and there's a few that you're like, eh, I'm not so crazy about that one, then give it away. For the price that you're getting them for, you could buy these bundles and separate them and, um, and use them for Christmas gifts. I mean, you just have lots and lots and lots of options. You just do. From a stinking simple pineapple to an absolutely gorgeous, stunning butterfly. Then each, I think each bundle has eight or nine different sets. So, now you see what made Spellbinders Spellbinders, what helped launch them into the crafting community. It wasn't that they just made die cuts, it's that they made innovative die cuts that did more than one thing. They cut, 
they embossed, and they stenciled. And you can do a, a cut and just a stencil, or a cut and just an emboss, or if you really want to, you can just stencil this. You don't even have to you, you don't even have to die cut it. If you've got something that you want to put it on, you can just go in there and use this as a straight stencil. But years ago, gosh, I want to say it was close to 15 years ago, this was revolutionary. And I think it still is. I think we forget how magical we can make white paper or how we can take little scraps of this and little scraps of that and make something that is just beautiful. They've given you the hard part. They've given you the dyes. You now have the creative part to take it to what you want it to be. Like I said, when you can take pattern paper and, and sand it, or you take my chocolate paper or my magic paper or sand it, or you take cardstock and ink it, or you take white paper and start with nothing. Start with a blank, blank slate and play. Give yourself the chance. I think you will, I think you'll find one, you're gonna look at dies completely different again. You're gonna start pulling out all of your dies going, well, does this have an embossing feature? And can I emboss that or can I stencil this? All of a sudden, they have a brand new life to them. And that's really what we want when we're spending our money. We want something that's gonna give us lots of life and longevity because we're not just crafting for today, we're crafting for tomorrow and the next week and the next month and the next year. You may have kids on the way, your own babies. You may have grandbabies coming. You may have daughters-in-laws and sons-in-laws and children to make things for. Crafting, it, 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 it expands generations. You give a Christmas card to a toddler at your house on Christmas and you give a Christmas card to your, um, your 80 year old mother. And in that moment, you've made something for both of them that was handmade by you. And you just can't get anything better than that. All right, so, oh, I did this one earlier. Woohoo, did that one earlier. Okay, I'm gonna show you the samples the, I'm going to show you the bundles and then I'm going to show you the samples and we'll go from there. So this is, this is the Indie, what are we calling the Spellbinders Indie Collection. So it comes with a Norwal and little hearts. Isn't that so cute? Look at the sailboat and the crab and the compass and the anchor. It comes with the pineapple. It comes with the darling uh, where did I put it? The darling make and take that we did. That octopus is from our make and take. This is all in one bundle. It comes with the cactus. It comes with the sun and the moon, or the, I guess it's the sun and a cloud, and little raindrops. It comes with the llama. It comes with the little fruit bowls. It comes with your coffee mug and your donuts. And then it also comes with the bigger dies, which are your fairy door, all of these. I mean, it's amazing. And your unicorn. This is a rainbow unicorn. So cute. So all of these, you get all of these in the bundle. So there's two, seven, uh, seven, 10, 11, 17, 20, 22, 29, 35, uh, 40, about 48 different dies. They retail for $112.89 and your price is $32.99. $32.99. That is, well, it's less than a dollar a die. <laughs> If you're counting all the dies in each set, you can't go wrong. This is bundle number one. And let me show you the samples that go with it. Got lots and lots and lots of samples. Okay, here we have our cute little coffee mug and donuts. Look at how cute the cactus is. Is that darling? 
Look at how cute the sailboat is. And I'm telling you, if there's a die set or two that's not your favorite for that price, they were $112. They're now $32.99. They were almost $113. Look at the Norwal. And we incorporated the little crab from the other set, the sailboat set. Oh, here's the pineapple. That's done on my chocolate paper and sanded. And then we did it on double-sided paper and sanded it and it sanded to white. Then we have the llama. Then we have the fruits. How cute are the fruits? Then we have the other one with the cactus. And the words that you're seeing are also dies and stamps, but those are sold separately. They're still on a flash sale. They're $14.99 down to $6.99, but they are not part of a bundle. Look at the little sun and the cloud. How cute is that? We have the little rainbow that went with the unicorn in a shaker. Shaker. There we go. We have our fairy door. All part of the bundle. We have our octopus. We have our llama. Our cute little sailboat. Our pineapples again. All the cards are bright and happy and festive. And remember, these are indie dice, so you can't get them anywhere else but an independent retailer. And last but not least, the Norwal. Oh, so cute. Then we have the second bundle. And the second bundle is made up of the layering dies. So you've got the butterfly on the, the side view. You have got, um, these are roses. You've got the palm tree. These are beautiful. These are the tulips. Those are absolutely gorgeous. And they all layered. There's the butterfly that I was using. Here's the butterfly that I used today. All of these are meant to layer. They're just beautiful. And the big oak. Oh, and the rabbit. The oak and the rabbit. So again, we're looking at uh, four, 10, 21, 27, 30, 34, 40 dies. You're looking at 40 dies and they are all meant to layer. They retail for $122.92. Your price is $39.99 for all of them. And you are gonna do all the layering. They're so pretty. So here's that palm tree with the layering and you can see how they've layered the paper to give you the dimension. Here's the side butterfly. Here are the tulips, which are gorgeous. And this was done inking, just like I did. They just, it's all done with inking. Take your mementos and go. Inking. Here we have the bunny rabbits. Aren't those so cute? Love the bunnies. Here we have the oak tree. Again, inking, just like I did, inking. And here we have the butterfly that I used today. So that is bundle number two. And then I have a layout 
to show you that we used bundle number one. So there's all the cute little fruits and the, the clouds and the sun. And we've got a 12 by 12 layout for a picture here, a picture here, journaling here. Just darling. But then I told you that there were some open stock dies and that's where those words come in. So I've got the wishing set, it's the dies, and then the stamp. So wishing, wishing you joy, wishing you a happy birthday, wishing you a lovely day. You get all the stamps and the dies, and they are on sale as well. And here's the sample of wishing. And then we have friend. For my dear friend, everyone needs a friend. You are a true friend, forever my friend. A gift like, a gift like you, a, a friend like you is a gift. <laughs> so you get the die, you get the shadow, and you get the stamps. And here's the card sample. These, for the words, are awesome for layouts because they're big. They're they've got some chunk behind them. Here's happy. Uh, happy when skies are gray, happy birthday, happy anniversary, so happy, happy for you. You are my happy, you make me happy. <laughs> happy day. <laughs> they retail for $14.99 and you're going to get them for $6.99. These are very limited. Well, all of these. The bundles are very limited. All of it's very limited. Then I have got the next one is enjoy so enjoy this moment enjoy the little things enjoy today enjoy life and have fun enjoy the special day enjoy your birthday oh i didn't show you this one. Aw, this one's with the the um indie set bundle one with the cactuses so super cute right okay back to enjoy here's enjoy <laughs> So this is the negative space. Cut out the word enjoy and backed it with a piece of paper that has been watercolored. Here's the positive. So this enjoy die cut came out of this piece of paper. Two cards, one roll. Then we have thanks. Thanks enough, can't say thanks enough, you made my day, thanks you made my day, thanks so very much. You got thanks. Super cute card. You have hello, a lovely hello, hello my friend, hello sunshine, hello how are you? Again, $14.99 down to $6.99. The words are not sold in a bundle. There is not an I want it all for the words. You have to get them open stock. Then we have love. Love you. Love you to pieces. Sent with love. Love you more than chocolate. Oh, that was really a lot of love. <laughs> That's some serious love. <laughs> and the last one we have is hugs. So sending hugs, giving you the best hugs, miss your hugs, big hugs, hugs to you, hugs and kisses. $14.99 down to $6.99. Okay. So I don't know where I put them. So we have our two bundles that are at an amazing price. You've got the layering bundle. That is $122.92 down to $39.97. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different die sets as part of it. Boy, I'm making a mess out of this. The girls are gonna kill me. And you have the indie line. Well, they're all indie line, the smaller sets that gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sets of dies. Retail is $112.89 on sale for $32.99. And now I think you understand why we opted to do these as a flash sale. All right, I'm gonna tilt on up. Ooh, I'm gonna tilt on back. 
Oh, back, back, back. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you too. Boy, you got to see really up close. I'm going to say, all right, you guys, it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple. This is a flash sale. So if you love it, get them. If you don't, that's okay too. No big deal. But hopefully you learned something today and you learned a little bit more about Spellbinders and how unique and special their dies really are and where they started. They've come a long way, baby. But some things some things never go out of style. And the way they did their dies with that center cut to give you that beautiful frame around the whole thing, some things classic never goes away. So, all right, I'm gonna give a big thanks to all of you for staying with me. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. If they are sold out, put yourself on the notify me list a couple times if necessary. Okay, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.